talking good to anybody. <laughs> to the next 
level of service. But I come here on today to let you know that there's no need for us to envy one another. Because believe it or not, we all partake of the same gift. And that gift is Emmanuel, which is God with us. It's been said that envy shoots at another and wounds itself. See, the only person that you hurt when you get haterade in you is yourself. Because many times the person that you are hating on don't even know. Nor do they really care. It's really all about us suffering because of ourselves, because our hearts are not prostrated in the correct direction. Too many times we are looking horizontally when we should be looking vertically towards our Lord and our Savior. I don't know about you, but I heard the story about a crab fisherman who would carry the crabs that he had caught in a bucket. And somebody said, why don't you put a lid on that bucket? Aren't you simply afraid that the crabs will get out? He simply replied, no. Because the moment one crab climbs out. The other ones reach up and put it back in. Don't we do that sometimes? How dare you succeed without my permission? How dare you do well without my approval? How dare God elevate you and not consort me? How dare God bless you and not bless me the same way? I need for you to come back down here where I am. See, in our text, the rhetorical contrast is the righteous who are wise and the wicked who are foolish. See, those who are wise in the eyes of God, per Proverbs 14, they build up and they don't tear down. Those who are wise walk in the fear and adoration of God. This simply means that no matter what comes our way, we are to have respect for our master. The wise seek the best for others. The wise, the Bible says they reap abundantly because they sow abundantly. The wise and the faithful don't sit on thrones of lies. But they are honest in action and thought. The wise understand that godly wisdom leads to knowledge and that knowledge leads to understanding. The wise, they seek wisdom. They don't bathe in folly. The wise dismiss him or herself from foolishness because a wise person to know that knowledge can't be found with the foolish. The wise strive to live right they strive to love right and they strive to walk right. And because they are willing to do those things, they are willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel. Yes. Yes. 
A wise person considers his or her steps and cautiously turn away from evil. The wise plan good and they simply find good. So with that understood, how should we deal with being enemies of one another when we should be celebrating the birth of the king? Point number one, we seek to build up. I don't know about you, but an unwise person invest in something and then tear it down. But God is calling the people of God. Let me make it specific for you. He's calling Pope Missionary Baptist Church in Central Iceland, New York to build up we are to build up the house of God. We are to build up one another. We are to support one another in ministry. And we are to love on each other no matter what. God is calling for the people of God to build the walls of the kingdom of God. Verse number one and two states, a wise woman Builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. When utilizing wisdom, one shows godly judgment. And if we're going to show godly judgment on today, we must be a people of the book. It seems like no matter how many sermons we preach, no matter how many services we have, we cannot deviate from the book. We can't preach that enough. We must be people of the book day in and day out. I don't care what you're going through. Be in the book. If you're sick, be in the book. If you're tired, be in the book. If you're down and out, be in the book. If you're up and out, be in the book. Be in God's word. Because see, when you are a student of the book, you gain what we call godly judgment. And we're able to develop ourselves and the body of Christ for every seeker. And let me throw this in parenthetically. I'm going to take my time. We don't prepare just for sinners. That's a misconception that we have. We prepare for every seeker. What do you mean? There's nobody in this room that's not a seeker. We have to encourage one another. We have to love one another. We have to care about one another while we all draw the sinner to Christ. We don't seek to tear down one another. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. Rev, see, I need you. And see, so you need me. We are all a part of God's family. See, we need one another. That's why we are called the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. Take it in. We are called the body of Christ, not the limb of Christ. We all need one another to get the work done correctly. We have purpose individually and collectively. What that means is that you got a ministry on your own. You are called to ministry by your baptism. It's not just the preacher's job 
to minister to you, sometimes you gotta encourage yourself. So we must seek to build up and not tear down. And those who are seeking godly wisdom strive to remain wise. That means we have to travail even in the midst of hard times to continue to walk in holiness. We take the time Sister Norwood, to sincerely invest in the word. And I like the word invest because y'all already know we're supposed to read and study. But what I want all of us to do, myself included, is make a declaration that I am going to invest in the word of Almighty God. If you do it in 10 minutes, do 15 minutes. If you do it in an hour, do an hour and 15 minutes. Invest a little bit more. Because you know, if you invest right in the proper season, you will reap right. Invest in the word of God. But if we are going to be wise in this time of year, we must be people of prayer. We must begin to pray without ceasing. And prayer for those who don't understand is dialogue with, with God. And he is not a genie in a lamp. He is not here to grant your spiritual wishes. But prayer is dialogue with God. That means God speaks, you listen, you speak, God listens. But we must be a people that are dedicated to dialoguing with our God. But not only that, we need to be committed to growing our gifts for the glory of God. That means we spend some time once we've invested in the word, once we've prayed into making ourselves the sharpest tool in the box we can be. You gotta grow your gift. I always tell folks to grow your craft. If you're a preacher, preach to the glory of God. If you're a deacon, serve to the glory of God. If you're a deaconess, serve to the glory of God. No matter what your title might be, do it for the glory of God. Because we got to understand at the end of the day who our boss really is. Let me tell you one thing, your boss ain't the pastor. We got the same boss. We serve the most high God. And above him, there he is. The other. So we invest. We pray. We develop our gifts. But think it was we got to walk in fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. And I, and, and I was saying this to my family this weekend, if you would really be saying, man, but this virtual thing really got me twisted. <laughs> it's good to see the family. It's good to see the church, but it ain't the same. And I think every now and again, we need to stop texting and stop zooming and stop calling. Because we walk in fellowship with one another. And I know I know this gets cliche-ish, but we are fellows in the same ship, growing in the same direction, and it better not be nobody drilling no holes. <laughs> but if we are fellows in the same ship, we need to get to know one another. And let me know this: we can't get to know each other only on Sundays during the service. We have to spend some showing up, sincere. Intentional time with one another. We have 
have to walk in godly fellowship. But while we're doing that, we must continue, if we're going to be wise, to grow our faith. That means, Sister Reddick, we have to practice being in his presence. We have to do this intentionally. We have to want to walk in wisdom and we must want to add God to the equation. And let me tell you something. I like mathematics. This is a good one. As long as Sister Regina, check this out. As long as Jesus is in the equation, everything's going to be all right. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. Sickness plus Jesus equals healing. Heartache plus Jesus equals healing. Depression plus Jesus equals healing. A broken spirit plus Jesus equals healing. As long as Jesus is in the equation, everything, I go to my seat on that one, everything's going to be all right. Let me, let me, let me give you one more. COVID-19. Plus Jesus equals healing. Everything is going to be all right. It may look dark right now, but everything is going to be all right. Some folks might be sick, but everything is going to be all right. As long as Jesus is in the equation, everything is going to be all right. I like that. Amen. But understand, a wise person builds up. Like I said, add Jesus. Just try it. Go home. Add Jesus to the equation. But not only does the wise build up, the wise Strive to fear the Lord. What that means is that we intentionally press ourselves to respect God. Sometimes in the real world, Brother Terry, we have a lot of things on our plate. We have jobs. We have kids. We have situations that tend to take our focus away from God. So we must intentionally push ourselves to give. God, respect. Yeah, I don't know about you, but sometimes, and I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest with you, I got to move Larry out of the way. Because most times there ain't other folks, that's the problem. I'm just being transparent. Can I keep it real? This is the last Sunday of the year, so why not? Sometimes, I got to move Larry out the way. Because Larry has pride. Larry has ego. Larry has fallen short of the glory of God since this morning. So because of that, I have to intentionally get that joker out the way. I can't blame you. You, you, I can only blame 
numero uno. So I have to intentionally move myself out the way so I can see my God. I hope that makes sense for you. But I have to make a conscious effort to have reverential respect for my God. I have to make a conscious effort to acknowledge him. Because it says in all my ways. And it doesn't it, it, come automatic. You got to do something. You have to have a made up mind to acknowledge God. And too many times, I'm going to use myself as the example, I want to acknowledge me. What I want. What I need. But it's not about what Larry wants or what Larry needs. It's about the will of the almighty God. For Christ I will live and for Christ I will die. You see, I've come to understand there's no other way to live. Because I'm, I'm talking about me. If I follow Larry's ways, that leads to damnation. If I follow Larry's ways, it does not lead to wisdom. If I follow Larry's ways, it does not lead to knowledge. But Jesus said, Lord, I am with you always. Thank God he is with me always. Thank God he is with me in spite of me. Thank God he is with me in my trouble. Thank God he is with me in my heart. So I have to be intentional about my respect. I have to be intentional about my praise. Because all of my praise belongs to him. So, let me one state. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, I know Pastor James Furman was here. He would tell Hope Missionary Baptist Church to dwell in that secret place. In the midst of heartache, we must dwell in the secret place. When you are hurting, you must dwell in the secret place. In the midst of your brokenness, you must dwell in the secret place. If you feel lost, find yourself in the secret place. If you're all alone, find the secret place. When you feel like no hope is out there, dwell in the secret place. When friends have forsaken you, dwell in the secret place. I don't care what you're going through. Dwell in the secret place. But you gotta, you gotta dwell in that secret place. In the midst of the pandemic, Kelly, you gotta find yourself in the secret place. Add Jesus to that equation. In the secret place. So we seek to build up. We strive to have respect for our God. But last but not least, we continue to walk in peace. Verse 30 states, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. See, yeah, yeah. when we choose to walk in peace, see, I don't know about you, but my peace is priceless. When I walk in peace, everything in my way 
is smooth. But if I choose not to walk in peace, Sister Regina, that leads us to destruction. When we begin to sum it all up, at this time of year, there needs to be a rededication to the true gift. And that true gift is Jesus the Christ. And Ray, when I've got Jesus, I don't have to worry Amen. about you got it. I ain't got to worry about what's going on with you. All I have to do is focus on the Savior. And see, I can focus on the Savior because Jesus is my peace. I can live free from doubt because Jesus is my peace. I can serve my God with no condemnation because Jesus is my peace. I don't have to covet somebody else's gift because Jesus is my peace. There's no need for me to be filled with adoration because Jesus is my peace. I can take courage and have no fear because Jesus is my peace. I can abide with my brothers and my sisters because Jesus is my peace. I can be the true ambassador of Christ because Jesus is my peace. I can walk in the newness of life because Jesus is my peace. I have joy, unspeakable joy in the midst of chaos, in the midst of pain, in the midst of heartache because Jesus is my peace. The songwriter said, with peace like a river of tenderness my way with sorrow like sea billows they forget to roll but whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul with my joy is minimal it is well with my soul in the midst of distress it is well with my soul with my heart has been broken it is well with my soul when I don't have peace of mind it is well with my soul with family against me it is well with my soul you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Because guess what? Jesus is now on the scene. We don't have to worry about one another. Because we have God with us. We have the King of Kings. We have the Lord of Lords. And no matter what 2020 looks like, it is well with my soul. So I want to challenge you. On today, to celebrate the season of Christmas. Which when you break it down, it means Christ Mass. That means worship for Christ. So in the midst of this Christmas season, relish the gift. Bask in the gift. Cherish the gift. And seek to do like Jesus. 
build up the kingdom of God. Walk in reverential respect for our God and continue to walk in peace with one another. We are fellows in the same ship. There's no need to envy one another. There's no need to hate on one another because we are the body of Christ. He is the head and each one of us has an individual function yes. in the body. Yes. So we are all necessary. Point to your brother, your sister, and simply tell them you're necessary. The door of the church are open. The door of the church are open.